Moles are an interesting insectivorous species that lives in the soil and that sometimes causes damage in turf grass situations in yards, parks, and golf courses. Moles do not eat vegetation, so the damage that they cause is due to their feeding and moving activity when they're looking for their insect prey. When moles are moving through the soil near the surface, they push up the soil with their head and that's what forms the ridges as they sort of swim through the soil profile with their large scallop shaped front feet with big claws. When they're down deep in the soil profile, those large claws and big front feet work well for excavating soil that they then have to remove and push up into a hill. When people are affected by mold damage, they often go looking for a solution in places like books about wildlife damage or on the internet and there are many, many solutions that are reported to work. And I've often heard it said that with our gimmicky solutions, you can fool some of the moles all the time and all the moles some of the time, but you'll never fool all the moles all the time. So you need to learn to trap moles or learn to live with them. One of my goals with this video is to help you understand how to be most effective with traps. And the first step with most trapping activities for wildlife is identifying the right location to set the trap. When we see mold damage in a yard, we often see two general types of activity. One of those is longer, straighter sections of run. They may have some forks in them, but generally longer, straighter sections of run. And these are areas where moles are moving between feeding areas. And then we'll see areas where we have lots of runs that are turning in different angles and a high density of runs in a small space. These are areas where moles are, are feeding on grubs or other insects, when we're setting traps, even though we see the most activity in a feeding area, we want to set up the traveling runs because we know that moles will come back through those again. And to make sure that those are active, we can make a test hole by probing down into the run from above and leaving that hole open. And then if we come back later that day or the next day and that test hole's been plugged, then that indicates that a mole has been back through there and that run is indeed active. The next important factor for being successful is, is choosing a trap that is safe for the area where we're setting it. So if we are trapping in an area with lots of human presence or especially if there are children around, the harpoon trap may not be the safest trap. This is the Victor Out of Sight Mole Trap. Some of our local extension offices have this trap or, or similar ones available for you to rent or borrow. This trap has two sets of jaws that sit below the ground and straddle the run. A powerful spring and a dog that holds the backside of the jaws open until the trigger is released by a mole passing through. Some extension offices in Kansas have out of sight mold traps that have been modified. They're a little bit different, uh, but they work the same. Really the only difference is that we have a modified trigger that hangs down a little bit farther after we set this trap. To set this trap, make sure the dog is over the backside jaw. Use the setters to squeeze the jaws together, then reaching around the side, lift the trigger so it engages the dog and holds the trap open. To set the trap, place the trap over the run so that the jaws are straddling the ridge created by the run. Use a masonry trowel or similar flat bladed digging device to clear an unobstructed path for the jaws to pass through. Locate the position of the trigger on the top of the run and use your thumb to make a deep depression over the run that also creates an obstruction down in the mole's path. Finally, firmly push the trigger into the dog while you press the trap firmly down against the soil so that the trigger is firmly pressing on our soil obstruction and the jaws are down in the ground straddling the run. If the run is more than about an inch deep, meaning that there's more than an inch between the top of the tunnel and the outer surface of the ridge formed by the run, then we need to excavate that run, place our trap down into the run. It's important to create a ridge that will be an obstruction that the mole has to push through and up and then fill the soil back in so that our trap jaws are aligned with the depth that the run is in. So when we come back the day after setting traps and our out of sight mole trap is open with the dog loose like this, that indicates that the trap has sprung, 
So we'll just remove that trap gently from the soil. That one's down in there pretty good, so I'm gonna dig it out. And we caught a mole. To remove the mole from the trap, we can either use our setters or just squeeze the jaws back together. And this is our eastern mole, Scalopus aquaticus. At this spot, we're gonna demonstrate setting the mole eliminator trap. This style, in many ways, works the same as the out of sight mole trap. It's going to be a scissor style trap. To set this trap, push the jaws down into the run. Use our foot to press firmly down on the top of the trap several times to open up a path for our jaws. We can now push firmly down onto the top of the trap until the trap stays set with the trigger depressed down into an obstruction that we've created by pushing down on top of the trap. Then the mole will come through, push on the obstruction below our trigger, deploying the trap and the scissor jaws will grab the mole. Similar to the out of sight mole trap, when the mole eliminator has been deployed, it's very obvious the trap is no longer in the depressed position. And we'll pull it up to see if we caught a critter, caught a mole, or if we're just sprung. And again, we've got a mole. So the Trapline Products Mold Trap requires less hand strength to set than the out of sight mold trap, but it is a directional trap. So we have to place one trap facing one direction in the run and another trap facing the opposite direction in the run so that we can catch moles coming from either direction. The parts of the Trapline Products Mold Trap consist of a dog with two rods, a long rod that engages our trigger and a short rod that engages the loose jaw of the trap. Our trigger consists of a main rod that's bent into a square and a small loop that the dog engages. Our loose jaw is connected to a spring that powers the trap. And when set, that spring must be loaded and engage the spring rod. We wanna make sure that our dog is pointing up, open, the loose jaw, engage the short arm of the dog in the loose jaw, then engage the long arm of the dog in the loop on the trigger, wind our spring once to load it, and engage that spring in the spring rod. To set the Trapline Products mold trap in a mold run, we need to dig out a section of run that we try and keep whole as a soil plug, because that plug will be placed back into the run later to prevent any air movement or sunlight, which will tip off the mole to the fact that we've been inside there and he may or may not come back. We place one Trapline Products mole trap facing each direction down the tunnel. Stake the traps in place with the pin flag that also marks the trap, and then replace our soil plug, making sure to fill in around the plug with loose soil so that we don't have any sunlight or air reaching the tunnel. And now we're gonna demonstrate setting the harpoon style trap. Our harpoon style trap consists of a frame that's bent in a U-shape spring that powers the trap. Our trigger, we have our dog that will engage the trigger when the trap is set. And the dog also engages the top plate to hold the trap open until the mold triggers it. So to set our harpoon style trap, we first need to make sure the dog is outside of our pan. Then we're going to firmly grip the trap with the dog pointed down. Quickly pull back on the spring, then release our tension so that the dog engages the lip on the back of our trigger. To set this trap, we first need to make an obstruction on the top of the run. We can do that with our foot or our fist. Then we line up our harpoon trap over the top of the run with the harpoons centered on the run and our trigger centered on the run. Now I'm holding up on the trigger mechanism on the back so that the trap doesn't go off as I firmly seat the trap against the obstruction that we've created. Now when the mole comes through the run, he'll push up on the obstruction, springing the trap and impaling himself with the harpoons. It's a good idea to mark your trap or a test hole that we've created in a run with a flag. That way we can find it when we come back to check the traps the next day or to identify our active runs before we set traps. 
Because moles can be active any time of the day, you may want to check your traps twice a day, which will allow you to catch more moles more quickly and solve your problem in a more timely fashion. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more content on wildlife management. <laughs>